welcome as the world recognized international elimination of violence against women day women's rights activists in india have been on edge because there's a crucial hearing coming up in the supreme court this week after india's top court in july accused the country's women of misusing a law created to protect them from harassment by their husbands and their in-laws a five judge panel of the supreme court will be meeting this week to revisit that judgment We're talking about the anti-dowry law introduced in 1983 originally designed to safeguard women from abuse and sometimes death in the hands of husbands and in, in and in-laws. In July the Supreme Court ruled that the act was now being used as a weapon by disgruntled wives and issued an order restricting the automatic arrest of the husband or his family members when dowry cases are filed until the complaint is verified by a three-person committee of civil society members. Now while the court stated that grave physical injury or death of the aggrieved would be exceptions to this directive it, it observed that many complaints filed under the anti dowry law were not bona fide and said that uncalled for arrests may ruin the chances of a settlement or reconciliation now women's rights activists had slammed the verdict which they say makes a law put in place to protect women meaningless that it does irreparable damage to the provision in the ipc that criminalizes cruelty towards married women by their husbands and in-laws in a, in october the supreme court did a u turn and observed that it disagreed with its earlier order diluting section 498a of the indian penal code and will be reviewing it this week and we're asking tonight Is it true or is it a dangerous false myth that women routinely misuse domestic cruelty laws and does the Supreme Court's July verdict on section 498A place family honor before women's rights On the show tonight Supreme Court lawyer Vrinda Grover Siddharth Luthra former additional solicitor general Deepanshu Shukla men's rights activist he has fought and won his own dowry harassment case Shailaja Chandra, former Chief Secretary, Delhi retired IAS officer, Poonam Mutreja, the Executive Director of the Population Foundation of India, filmmaker Deepika Bhardwaj in India, where crimes against women are rampant. She is a female documentary filmmaker that stands out as a rare voice for abused men. She's made a documentary film that she hopes will uh, help persuade authorities to rewrite this law. And then we have Sanjay Shrivastava. Okay, basic principles here. I think what you're trying to say here is that there are the laws are unequal. But do we can we expect laws to be equal in a country where there's so much inequality? It's just inherent in us. Are you taking away the woman's basic protections, the few protections that we have, the right to complain against someone who is harassing you and a harassment that could lead to death, that could lead to you committing suicide? Or do I wait to die in order for a strong no, think, case to come no, against no. the perpetrators? There are several laws and there is a lot of overlap. The laws for to protect women there are about 34 in our country we, on this scale uh, globally we are doing very well we have plenty of laws is the implementation which is in a mess we all know that okay let us look at 498a it came in it, 1983 as you said we have crossed about 35 years statistics will never bring this out well the conviction rate is not very high it's about 15% i may be wrong but that's what the internet tells me why is that important It's important because if it was a high conviction rate it justifies that action was necessary. You may say that the judges were against so or the evidence was But just you also have a low conviction rate when it comes to rape. Does that mean the rape didn't happen? No, no. Hear you me out think? because you're taking your you're deflecting what I'm trying to say. My perception all along was as an administrator as a person who was in society who met people that it's a very good law and must stay. But When I went to the public grievances commission and the cases didn't come to me but I became aware of grievances and the number of cases where people were complaining that it isn't the woman who was making the complaint it was all completely manufactured in the house to be able to nab a particular family because of dowry death I want to give you one example one example a woman gets married in 15 days she tears up with a pair of scissors the husband suits her own trousseau It's found out that she was mentally imbalanced nobody said that the marriage was mm. you know she should have been uh, uh, um, this should have been shared it wasn't shared they then had this case made against the family i knew this family for 40 years they were incapable of doing this they were sitting in the crime against women cell on a bench outside the police officers and not being heard for 4 hours and 5 
with all my clout, all the people I knew, there's nothing I could do to help. They had to buy their way out of trouble. 15 lakhs had to be paid, despite the fact that they said, take away all your jewelry, we will get you treated. They were that decent. The boy is now happily married. He has two children, no problems at all. Uh, it may be anecdotal, maybe one, but I do feel that the judges were right up to this point that they protected a case of harassment so which was individual case anecdotal which is what Rinda is saying Poonam then respond over here we have Shailaja who's saying it is a good law it must stay but there are low convictions Poonam, Shailaja please respond after women have no recourse it was already very tough and now you've made it impossible let us look at the practical thing what has happened the July judgment was given with certain facts before the judges they gave a finding which was in the nature of guidelines. Those guidelines, I don't know if everybody knows, the one Women and Child Ministry has already formulated yes. guidelines in keeping with that. Yes. Before those were, I mean, got into action, the new uh, um, cognizance was taken in October by the um, higher Large court correct. to look into it. Now the question is that when you have a situation where <coughs> guidelines are given, the first question is, should, is it <coughs> judicial overreach to do that? I would like to say that Vishaka judgment was nothing but guidelines. It stayed over there for 15 years before it became a law. So there's nothing wrong with the judges giving guidelines. No, but we're, if, not, we're not saying there's anything wrong. We're talking about the guidelines in particular that the judge has given. Yeah, but that those guidelines are totally there was a gap in the law. May I, I complete? Please, Brinda, I didn't interrupt you. Just give me an opportunity. I'm not used to standing in court and fighting. I'm used to being heard. So... Now, coming to what I was trying to say, when you have a situation where 498A is being agitated at the level of the Supreme Court, something has gone radically wrong in society. It doesn't Correct. reach the Supreme Court because it's a one case or a one anecdote which Sanjay has been happily repeating. I was trying to make a case not for that family. I was trying to say, try and look at the fact that some things are going amiss. Now, when they have given these guidelines and when the ministry is in a position to do it, you get a new uh, uh, set of judges to look at it. I see absolutely nothing wrong with 498A staying. Nobody is saying do away with 498A. It has to stay. But in case there is this situation where it is not a case of physical uh, harm, and it is mental harassment, it is incumbent on somebody, it doesn't have to be housewives, but somebody to look at whether a prima facie case is made because in this case the entire onus has been put on the, on the criminal which is not there for other sections of law. You have to be extremely careful, we are not being careful. So okay, I want to give no, everybody a chance to make closing arguments. We're getting out of time, yeah. hold on. One Wait, I'm sorry, something has gone extremely wrong and uh, here's Sonia who also has faced uh, a situation where things went completely wrong. Sonia, what is your story? What happened with you? Hi, Sonia. I'm sorry. My story happened in 2009. In the 10th year, I took my first day from the ATM card. I took my ATM card. I took my ATM card. After that, I took my ATM card. 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 Mentally and physically, दोनों तरफ से उन्हें demanding सारी मानिस बहुत सारी demanding but जब मैं fulfill नहीं कर पाई तब उन torture बहुत कर शुरू कर दिया उन्होंने उन्हें मेरे family के साथ बात भी करना बंद कर दिया मेरे even कि मेरे mummy से भी बात बंद कर दिया मैं बहुत torture होके फिर मैं वापस आ गई मेरे मायके में पहले मैं job करती थी but now I'm jobless नहीं तो आपने case file किया नहीं बोले तो police you take legal recourse तो क्या हुआ? उसमें अभी तक चली रहे केसेस में मेरा अभी तक शॉर्ट आउट नहीं हुआ। नहीं जब आप पुलिस के पास गए तो क्या हुआ था आपके पास? पुलिस के पास जब मैं गए थे उन्होंने ईप से लेने के लिए मना किया था मेरे केसेस उन्होंने नोएडा या फरीदाबाद में सिफ्ट करने के लिए कहा उसके बाद हमें गए नहीं तो हाँ मैंने गया था एडवोकेट पास उन्होंने किया था भी फाइन डीवी एक्ट तो आपको फॉलोअप करना पड़ा बहुत फॉलोअप करना पड़ा डीवी एक्ट अभी चल रहे मेरे बट उसका अभी तक कोई प्रोसेजर कंप्लीट नहीं हुआ चली रहे अभी छह साल हो गया मेरा अभी तक छह साल और आपकी नौकरी अभी है नहीं आई एम जॉबलेस नाउ देन हाउ आर and you want to okay so this is the other reality right so, when, so my so we are, i have to go in for closing arguments to everyone shalaja first to you you say something is extremely wrong this is the reality that if 
even before this new change, the Supreme Court uh, July verdict, if you went to a police station, they would dismiss you. They would say, go back, sort it out, figure it out. Now, aren't you emboldening the police even more to say that go back, listen, go to a committee, family welfare committee, we'll listen to it, whatever little it's recourse. It's a pity that the police need to be brought to in the first place. It really is because they really are wooden-headed about these things. They but they are the only recourse that a woman has. White. They see it as a person, I mean, person who has Tell to... Tell I'm yeah. sorry. If I'm in a marriage, I cannot go to my in-laws and ask them to solve it for me, right? No. I have to go to the police. I have to go to the law. So we can't say take the police out of the equa equation. No, you have this committee, which the government is making committees with the right kind of people on it. I would say, allow me to just say that even the sexual harassment law, there is a need for a prima facie case to be established because otherwise it's draconian what has happened. You are in okay. or out. This is really shameful. And if you don't have somebody, you have to trust somebody. If the government makes a committee and you're going to see even they are uh, useless, nothing can be done. But the government would have been an up in arms if this judgment had really been something so unacceptable. They, however, went along with it. Now we are waiting for a new judgment on whether this is tinkering into a process of the executive. It's a completely different issue. If the judges get into 498A, it will be very unfortunate. That's not the issue at all. And no one is saying 498A should be done away with. I'm only saying that the committee idea is not a bad one. What they had drafted was okay, in a kind of... Okay, you're closing argument.